So how do you actually improve your credit score without applying for new credit? I'm gonna take your credit score and I'm gonna take your credit portfolio and I'm gonna teach you how to increase your score using everything that you have available to you right now without applying for a thing. Okay, so we're gonna split this into two segments. We're gonna split this into what your current credit looks like, and then we're gonna take a look at what your future credit could look like 30 days from now after following the steps to this video. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper, just like this, and I want you to turn it sideways, and I want you to write exactly the same format that I have on this board. One half of it being current credit, and the other half of it being future credit right here. What I want you to do in your current credit profile is list everything that you have actively reporting out to the credit bureaus as of now. That means loans, lines of credit, any HELOCs. The easiest way to do it is to pull up your credit profile on either CreditWise from Capital One or maybe Credit Karma, or you can run your free credit report and it will literally send you your PDF uh, a format of everything that's on your credit report that's actually active. Now when you do this, I want you to separate the lines of credit from the loans. So there's two different types of credit profiles you can have. You can have a loan which doesn't have a limit. In other words, you get a loan, you pay it back, it gets paid in full. A line of credit gives you access to money, you use it and then you can pay it back, but you can also use it again, like credit cards, HELOCs. The easiest way to do that is just to write a CC next to it for credit card or write an L for loans. And then after you get all that done, the second thing I want you to do is going to be write down the limits and the balances. So on all your credit cards, you're obviously going to write down the limits and you're going to write down the balances relevant to that credit limit. So let's say you have a Discover credit card. Let's say that credit card has a $3,000 balance and let's say it has a $5,000 limit. I want you to write down both of those numbers next to the Discover credit card line that's actively reporting out to the credit bureau. So you keep it all organized on that same sheet of paper horizontally. Any loans that you have, I want you to write down the current balances next to them as well. And then the third thing that I want you to do, this is the last step for this one, is I want you to list all derogatory I have no idea how to spell that, so don't correct me. Remarks or marks on your credit. So what I mean by that <clears throat> is I mean foreclosures, bankruptcies, anything like that, uh, repos. After you get all of that listed out, what I want you to do is I want you to highlight any revolving line of credit when you wrote down in step two your limits, anything that's over 50%. Easiest way to figure this out is to take, for example, our previous example with that Discover card, and what you would do is you would take your $3,000 credit balance and you would divide it by the limit, 5,000 right there, and it would give you a 60% 0.06 or 0.6, which is a 60% utilization Rate. and I want you to highlight anything that's over 50%. The second thing I want you to do in a different highlighted color or just underline it, it doesn't really matter, um, be creative with it. For your loans, remember everything that you marked L, I want you to highlight in a different color anything that's over $20,000. And once you get all of this done, you can feel free to pause this video. We're gonna move into the next steps of how to increase it without applying for new credit for the future, okay? So stay tuned for that. Okay, so the reason I wanted you to have all of that listed out on your horizontal piece of paper, horizontal, is because I want you to fully understand what I'm about to teach you. I want you to understand the different effects on your credit from the way your balances and limits are reporting out. All right, so the first thing that I want to teach you is I want to teach you the concept of your limits, your balances, and uh, how those different lines of credit and loans compare. So think about it like this. Uh, think about it on a tally structure. The more tallies you get of positive good credit history reporting out to the credit bureaus, the better your credit score will be and the more longevity you will have on your credit profile. So if you have a fixed rate loan, all the loan balances that you marked over $20,000, that's kind of a even balance. And this is going to be kind of weird to explain, but think about it like this. It's going to report out as $20,000 or more of debt which is a negative thing. But every single month that you pay that loan on time, that's a, a certain amount of principal being reduced from the loan balance. So your loan balance gets decreased, which is a positive thing. And it also is an active reporting trade line that gets reported out to all three credit bureaus. So you got two positives and you got one negative of the debt. Now, obviously it doesn't mean that you should take your 20 grand if you have that and pay off your car. It makes no sense at all. You can do a lot better things with $20,000 than just pay off your car. So hang on tight while I get through this whole 
explanation before you raise any questions. Now on the second side of things, you have your credit limits. Now these are weighed a lot more heavily on your credit profile than just a loan. There's only so much a loan can do. You either pay it or you don't pay it. But a credit card has different variables. You have, I'm sure you've heard it before, don't keep your balances above 30%. What I want to teach you is how to rewire your brain to understand how the credit bureau's algorithm actually works. We have that 5k limit on that credit card and we had that $3,000 balance. That's gonna give us a 60% utilization rate is that that every single time it gets reported out to the credit bureau is a getting reported out as a debt of three thousand dollars which is a negative same thing as the loan uh, B getting reported out as a negative to the credit bureaus because the limit is over 0% every time you use a credit card You should pay it off in full That's how the credit bureaus want you to use the credit and uh, that way it gets reported out that you used it It gets paid in full and it actively gets reported out to the credit bureaus in a zero balance but Let's be real. That's not really the case right now or else you probably wouldn't be watching this video on how to improve your credit So you're getting two dings of negatives and you're also getting uh, let's take a look at the positives You have a positive reporting trade line Ding, 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 that's a good one right there. And um, you also have available credit of $2,000, which is a positive thing right there. These are the two things, in a nutshell, that we're gonna work, focus on then in the next half of this video on how to improve your credit score. And I'm trying to squeeze everything in there as fast as possible because it's, <laughs> it's a lot of information to throw at you. But feel free to pause, ask any questions in the comment section, and I'll try to make a new video as fast as I can to really help you guys increase your credit. Okay, you've been patient enough with me so far. Let's talk about how to increase your credit score for the future. You've got everything listed out and what I want you to uh, identify on your credit is if you have below a 650 score, is your score lower than 650 because of A, missed payments, collections, derogatory, or is it B, because of high balances, um, but you have no missed payments, you have a perfect on time payment history. As more time passes, there's nothing you can really do about that. That's not really, an, that's a non-controllable aspect at this point to proceed for. If you have anything dragging your credit down because of a uh, derogatory remark, then uh, just go ahead and just throw that out because you, you can't do anything about that. Let's focus on increasing your credit score the best that we can right now. So, how do we do that? The first thing is first, is I want you to set goals for this. And the goal that I want you to have is to pay down your balances. So the controlled substance that we have right now uh, is paying down your, your limits. So if you have, for example, that Discover credit card, a $3,000 balance with a $5,000 limit, what I want you to do is I want you to take all your highlighted 50% utilization rate or over, and I want you to set a goal to pay down the highest utilization rate that's gonna take you the fastest amount of time below 50%. So for example, if you have two different credit cards above 50%, one has $15,000 and the other one has a $3,000 balance and they're both reporting out at 70% utilization. Obviously pay down the smaller credit balance first uh, so that you can show the credit bureaus that you have certain credit cards under 50% because the amount of time that it's gonna take to cover down that $15,000 balance to pay it below that 50% mark, depending on what the limit is, is probably gonna take like way longer than to pay down the smaller one. So be realistic with this, use your common sense, but that's what I mean by paying down below 50%. Now this sounds a lot easier on uh, paper than it is actually to just pay it down. Uh, and I don't mean to just make this whole video about just telling you to pay down your balances because it's not gonna do anything for you unless I could give you free money, um, which I wish I could. What I'm trying to show you is how to prioritize which payments to take down first so that you can increase your credit score the fastest. And the easiest way you do that is just by following the previous example that I just said, but by also putting all of your money into that one card. So once you've found that one card that you can reduce that limit to below 50%, I want you to circle it with a red marker on your horizontal piece of paper, and I want you to only focus on that one card. As a human, you're going to focus on paying down your debt better if you focus on one thing at a time, rather than just looking at your whole credit profile and just stressing out, because it's just gonna drive you crazy. So if you take that one card and you start making minimum payments to all the other cards out there, just so nothing reports up negatively, and you pour the rest of the money into that one card, figure out how many months it's gonna take you to pay down that card below 50%. And then what I want you to do next is duplicate the exact same process. I want you to take the next card and pay it down below 50%. Put minimum payments towards that one card that you got below 50% and just keep repeating the cycle until you get everything below 50%. What that's going to do is that go that's going to drastically increase your credit score. Uh, since credit utilization is actually a huge heavy factor on judging your credit score, you're not gonna have anything reporting over 50%. I know what you're gonna think, some people that are really 
really analytical with this are going to be like, oh, but then the interest of the other cards starts kicking up. And that's true, but what I'm trying to do is leverage a quick ability to be able to apply for a new card so that you can do something special like a balance transfer, which I'll link in another video over here. This is just the starter phase to get your foot through the door so that you can really start knocking down some debt extremely fast. Again, depending on the total amount of debt that you have, this entire process can take probably around I would say three to six months, just depending on how much debt you have and how much income you have. Step two is going to be set up the time limits on your derogatory remarks. Set it on your calendar, any, because the longer that that goes on without any more derogatory remarks, the better your credit score will increase and the less of effect that derogatory remark will have. For example, after seven years, bankruptcies tend to fall off. However, they have less of an effect after two and four years. You can start getting approved for loans such as mortgages and stuff like that. So set the time limits of derogatory remarks. Just because you have a collection, again, I have no idea how to spell that, so Let's just leave it the way it is. Again, if you have a collection, this doesn't mean it's the end of the world. I don't want you to pay anything back. In fact, I'm eventually gonna come out with a course that's gonna teach you how to dispute these derogatory remarks so you don't ever have to even pay them back. But for right now, I want you to set the time limit so you can mentally have a positive thinking about this whole credit situation to get you out of the gutter. And then the third thing is, I want you to use all your credit lines. So remember I told you if you don't have above a 650 to not use your credit? Well, it's true. I want you to not use your credit because you're gonna have to end up paying it back anyway. And and identify yourself. Are you having bad credit because of high balances or are you having bad credit because of derogatory remarks? Most likely it's either a combination of two or just the high balances one. And if you have below 650, uh, don't use your credit. I mean, if you have high balances, why would you continue using your credit to keep racking up balances. Now on the flip side of that, if you have above 650 and you just have some other credit cards lying around that you're not using, this is how you take your credit to the next level. Until you get to about 720 to 740, you need to use all of your resources together, meaning all those old college credit cards, anything with a zero balance, just use it, especially if it has an annual fee. Think about it like this. If you have a credit card that's just sitting there with a zero balance and you never use it, you're never utilizing utilizing that aspect that I taught you in the beginning of this video of a positive trade line getting reported out. Yeah, it gets reported out every credit time or every uh, month to the credit bureaus when the statement cuts, but it gets reported out as nothing. It's just blank. So it doesn't decrease your score. It doesn't increase your score. It just adds to your overall line of credit. Uh, so if you have an access card that has a zero balance that you're just not using or just hiding away in a drawer, go ahead and use it. And the way I want you to use it is I want you to small buy very small items. I want you to spend $5 on that card and I want you to pay it off the moment you spend it. Let the statement cuts do it over and over and over while you follow these other steps that I'm going to teach you. And this actually will go for the 650 and below credit score people as well. Uh, only if you have a card that is just not being used at all. Because again, it's kind of like weighing the pros and the cons. Where do you fall on that line? If you have a bunch of negatively reported out things like high balances, derogatory remarks, every single little positive thing that you can add to your credit profile every single month that gets reported out, it's just another tally that you can add to to increase your credit score. It's all about increasing the score and this is how the algorithm works. As of right now, if you're watching this video on how to improve your credit score, it's probably because you don't have the best credit score, which is perfectly fine. Everyone goes up and down, credit is very volatile. It doesn't really matter. Let me teach you this concept really quick and I'll link it in the description or somewhere in the comment section below. It's very simple. Download on this on the same sheet, download all your statements uh, from all your credit card company. The ones being like Discover Credit Card Capital One, anything of a credit card that you have that gets reported out that you pay back every single month. I want you to print out the statements and I want you to see on the date on the top of that statement when the minimum payment is due and when the statement cuts. And what, you, what I want you to do the following payment day, I want you to pay it in uh, as much as you can before that payment day cuts. Five to 10 days before that credit card gets reported out and I want you to not use it until the statement cuts. What most people do is they pay on the minimum payment due date and whenever that happens, it gets reported out as the previous balance so nothing really gets decreased. I'm not gonna touch too much on this topic, uh, because I've already made another video about it. So in this video, I touched on a lot of different aspects. I'm gonna step aside so that you can see the big picture of what the board looks like. But if you followed all of these steps and understood everything that I tried to explain in the best way possible that I could, then uh, you should be on the path to increasing your credit score. Now, if in the next 30 days, 
you do not increase your credit score, what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at your sideways sheet and I want you to figure out what is dragging your score down. It's very, very easy to figure that out if you just go to the free annual credit report.com and run your credit report because it's literally going to tell you whether it's a good thing or a bad thing reporting out on the credit bureaus. This is going to be the easiest way to figure out what's going on with your credit so that you can use what's available to you right now in order to keep building your credit. Now, the moral of this video is going to contradict the title. Now, I'm saying how do you improve your credit without applying for new credit? The problem is I told you to get your balances below 50%. Now, if you do that, that should access or increase your score just enough to get approved for certain credit card companies like Capital One entry level credit card company. Capital One, uh, if you need to apply for a secured card, set aside 300 bucks and just do it. It's totally worth it and eventually you can cancel it once you get your credit score lined up. But the whole point is you want to get your credit good enough just good enough so you can get approved for another credit card so you can increase your total available limit and use that credit card just like I told you in this tip, which number three, which was use your credit if you have it. So if you have a card sitting aside, you wanna use it. It's so important that you do that and that's the whole point of this. You can also utilize that new credit card for a balance transfers. Uh, you can do so many different things with that to skip around on the monthly payments. And uh, if you subscribe to my channel, I teach every single tip possible that I can think of creatively uh, staying up to date in 2020 to be able to increase your credit score. So anyways, that was a super long video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you watched the end, thank you so much for watching all my videos. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment with any suggestions on making new videos. I'm kind of running out of ideas here, uh, so help me out if you can. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns or I said anything wrong in the video, then please call me out on it. Leave it in the comment section below. And uh, as always, good luck increasing your credit and thanks for watching.